Auto by Vessel guides you through the modeling process using templates and an automated design. Learn what information is essential and how to find help if needed in this first chapter. Before jumping to action, let's start by taking a peek at the user interface. In the user interface, you can find a menu with all the commands, some of them having an icon just before them. That icon is the same that you will find in the toolbar and that's how you can relate them. Then you have a table with a list of the different components present in your model, a 2D view in the center or in the upper part if it's a horizontal model. This 2D view is selectable just as the list of components. Then you have a 3D view for visualization purposes. And last but not least, the different chapters of the report with all that in mind, let's start our first model. We click on the menu File, then New. Here you can see at the top all the different options for pressure vessels that are available in Autopy Vessel. We'll be sticking to the default one, Pressure Vessels, then we'll click on OK. Here in our first dialog, we see all the different templates that are available as a starting point. Their purpose is to accelerate the modeling phase. We will be clicking on the first one, then next. Here at the top, we have the most important option of them all, the design code with their different revisions. Changing revision will allow you to check the vessel as it was designed back then. Then checking the division two box will allow you to change to division two whenever it's available. You can also check this box to change the hydrotext conditions as per the European code. The local load method chosen will affect all the openings in the vessel, but not the rest of the accessories. Then you can choose the flat standard as well as the pipe standard. And last but not least, the different ways of calculating the bolt surface. Here at your right, you can see that the year of the material database that I'll be using is going to be synchronized by default with my design code. We provide both customary and metric units to avoid random problems. Here's where we choose our design method, where we optimize and check. We'll be starting with optimize design, and then we will change to check design to see the difference. In this new dialog, we'll be inputting our design conditions. First, our pressure, which will be one megapascal. I will be selecting everything and overwriting it, typing my one. As a second option, I can type it before the units. That's what I'll be doing for my design temperature of 200 degrees. You can see that I've started with the red. That's what normally I do. These are meant for the mandatory fields. Mandatory as Calculations cannot run without them. That's the case for internal pressure and internal temperature that we just input, or for some elements. Without that information, that element will be ignored. Back in the dialog, I'll be inputting my liquid level of 500 millimeters and a corrosion of three. You can see that these false fields are in yellow. This yellow is indicating us that without it, that property will simply be ignored. That's the case of corrosion or liquid height, in which the case the F vessel will be without corrosion on empty. In other cases, such as the body flange dialog, yellow indicates that that dimension can be determined through the optimization loop. I'm leaving the rest of fields as per default, and you can see that most of them are in green. Green is telling us that there are provisions to get those values, whether they come from equations from the code or their default values embedded in the program. Some of those values can be changed through a customizable file. So I'll be leaving all the green fields as per default, including my test pressure that will be as per code. Then I click on Next. Now we land on the loss condition dialog. At the bottom right, we can see all the loads combination created by default by the program. This dialog is vastly treated in a single video 
that you can find at the top. For the time being, we'll be just deleting some cases. We will be removing the listed case, as well as erected and the shutdown condition. This will speed up our calculation later. Then we click on Next. We will not be treating this dialog in this video, but you can see that MDMT can be written in here and you can find any help on any dialog that if you need, click it on the question mark, then place it on the field. You can also do the same by checking on the field and then doing F1. And last but not least, you can always click on help for the help of the whole dialog. Then we click on next. In the geometry tab, you input the general dimensions of your template, such as the external diameter, the distance of the shell, or the position of the first saddle. This is easier and faster than creating your vessel piece by piece, inputting dimension after dimension. Whenever you are working, you will be changing these values to those of the vessel you are designing. But not this time. These default values correspond to the dimensions of our first exercise. That way, we can simply say next. In the report dialog, you can choose which chapters are going to appear in your report by checking and unchecking. And the most important one, you can choose the output language that can be changed anytime, as well as the unit system. All this information is available at any time, so I will be leaving it for later. So I just press next. The material tab is the last one of the creation wizard. Here you can assign different materials depending on the type of component. You can always use the apply default data, which allows you to, to assign different materials according to a predefined and customizable list. Please see the customizable files video for more information. For the time being, I will just click finish. And I can see my model, my list of components, my 2D and my 3D. In the second chapter of this series, we'll be exploring how to model a vessel starting from here. Thanks for watching and see you there.